All right, hey everybody. Today we are looking at section 3.3, which is proving lines are parallel. So in the last section, 3.2, we talked about how if we had parallel lines, then we knew that our corresponding angles, our alternate interior and our alternate exterior angles were all congruent and that our same side interiors were supplementary. Today, we're gonna to be looking at that same concept, but the converse. So I'm saying, hey, if I know here that angles one and two are congruent, then what do I know about lines M and N? I know that those lines are parallel, okay? Because they are corresponding angles and they are congruent. So it is the converse of what we did yesterday, so the same thing, but in reverse. Yesterday, we said, okay, we are given lines are parallel. Today we are saying, okay, what are we, what do we know? What are we concluding? We're concluding that our lines are parallel. So the key here is going to be knowing whether or not your given lines are parallel or you're proving that lines are parallel. And that will be able to tell you the difference between the theorem and the converse. And again, it is important that you know that difference. So again, if we are given the lines are parallel, that is the theorem. If we are proving that the lines are parallel, that is the converse. So all of these that you'll see that we're doing today, you'll notice our conclusion is that line M is parallel to line N, or our two lines are parallel. So if I have corresponding angles congruent, then my lines are parallel, okay? Same thing here with these three. If our alternate interiors are congruent, or if my alternate exteriors are congruent, then my lines are parallel. If my same side interiors are supplementary, then my lines are parallel. So again, same thing as what we did with section three, two, just the converse. So let's take a look. I wanna use the converses here and show that lines L and M are parallel. So I'm told angles one and five are congruent. So angles one and five are corresponding angles, okay? So we can say that because angles one is congruent to, ang uh, hold on, let me rewrite this and make it a little bit thinner so I'm not writing huge. Okay, so because angle one and angle two, not two, I'm having some difficulties. Angle five are corresponding angles, sorry about that. And they are congruent Line L is parallel to line M by the corresponding converse. Okay, so the key here is using the word converse. Okay, we know that is the converse because we are proving lines are parallel. All right, so let's take a look here. I'm told that angle four is 2x plus 10, angle eight is 3x minus 55, and x is 65. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we are going to plug x in. So the measure of angle two, or excuse me, the measure of angle four is gonna be two times 65 plus 10. So two times 65 is 130, and 130 plus 10 is gonna be 140, okay? Then we're gonna look at the measure of angle eight. We're gonna do three times 65 minus 55. Okay, so three times 65 is 195. And then when I subtract 55 from that, I get 140. So I have that angles four and eight are gonna be equal. So this means that the angle four is congruent to angle eight, okay? So here's angle four and here's angle eight. Okay, those are corresponding angles. So again, I can say that line L is parallel to line M by the corresponding angles converse. Again, we need to use the converse because we are proving that the lines are parallel, which is different than being given that they're parallel, okay? So if you have questions on that, go ahead and write those down now. Okay, so let's do a little more work with these. I'm told that angles two and six, so here's two, 
and 6 are congruent. So I'm going to look at angles 2 and 6. Angles 2 and 6 are alternate interior angles. Okay, so if my alternate interior angles are congruent, then I know my lines are parallel. So I can say that line R is parallel to line S by my alternate interior angles, again, converse. Okay, then we're going to look here. We have angle, measure of angle 6 is 6x plus 18. Measure of angle 7 is 9x plus 12, and we're told that x is 10. So that means that this is going to be 6 times 10 plus 18. So 6 times 10 is 60 plus 18 is 78. So the measure of angle 6 is going to be 78. Then with angle 7, I'm going to do 9 times 10 plus 12. So the measure of angle 7 is going to equal 9 times 10, which is 90, plus 12, which is 102 degrees. So what do we know about angles 6 and 7? Okay, if I take a 78 and 102, I know they're not congruent, but angle 6 and angle 7 are going to add to 180, so they are supplementary. All right, so if I look at angle 6 and 7, so here's one and here's the other. Okay, these two angles are not congruent, they are supplementary. And they are same side interior angles. So then I would be able to say that line R is parallel to line S by my same side interior angles. Again, converse. Okay, that word converse is going to be super important. And again, it is the converse because we are proving that the lines are parallel. Okay, if you have questions on that, please go ahead and write them down now. And here we go. Everybody's favorite. Yes, proofs are back in this chapter. Um, we did actually a couple of them in class. So, um, yes, proofs are back. We have to kind of work our way through it. So, let's take a look. First things first is find all of your given information. We are told that line L is parallel to line M. So, I'm going to look down here. Here's L parallel to M, so we know that that's given. Okay, angle one is congruent to angle three. Here, that is right here. So I know that this is given as well. Okay, so I'm really only finding three reasons. So what we're trying to do is we're given that these two lines are parallel. I wanna prove that lines P and R are also parallel. Let's first take for a second and show that it makes sense that they are, okay? If these two lines are parallel, I know what about angles one and two? Okay, I know that these are gonna be congruent. Okay, does that make sense? So if I'm given my lines are parallel, angles one and two are gonna be congruent because they're gonna be corresponding angles. Please don't do this on your paper, but just for a second, I'm gonna ignore this line. Don't, again, please do not scratch this out on your paper. When I look at these two angles, okay, they're corresponding. I'm told my lines are parallel. So this down here is gonna be my corresponding angles postulate okay or just corresponding angles is fine okay that time no angles one and two are congruent is because i'm given my lines are parallel and angles one and two are corresponding so they have to be congruent now the next thing that says here is angles two and three are congruent well if i now ignore what's over here again please don't scratch it out on your paper if i ignore this line i'm looking at angles two and three How do I know that these are congruent? Well, let's take a look. I'm told that one is congruent to two and one is also congruent to three. So both angles two and three are congruent to angle one, which means that they are congruent to each other. That is our transitive property. And remember, this is a transitive property of congruence, so substitution does not work. Okay, now that we have angles two and three are congruent, can I say that P and R are parallel? So yes, I can, all right, because these two angles are alternate exterior angles and they are congruent. So by the converse, I know that my lines are parallel. So alternate exterior angle, converse. Okay, so let's kind of talk through that just one more quick second. Let's do it one more time. 
just again, because I want you to be solid in this. If this makes complete sense to you, then feel free to go ahead and turn off the video now. Um, but otherwise, I'm going to talk through it one more time. So again, we are given angles one and three are congruent. Okay. I'm given that these lines are parallel. Because these lines are parallel, I know angles one and two are congruent. Okay. Well, two and three are congruent because they are both congruent to angle one. So it's a transitive property. And since they're congruent, I know that these lines here are going to be parallel because these are alternate exterior angles. And my converse says that if alternate exteriors are parallel or excuse me, are congruent, then my lines are parallel. Okay. So that is kind of how this proof works and where this proof went. I know again, reminder that yes, proofs are very difficult and we're going to be continuing to work with them. Um, and like I said, you will see a, a more, they'll be more prevalent in this chapter. So they're kind of coming back. So just take your time with them, do the best that you can and try not to get stressed out over proofs. Okay. Um, so again, write down any questions that you have and I will see you guys later. Have a great day.